guys. All right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this awesome titleable hex pattern procedurally with Substance Designer. If you've never opened the program before, you can still follow along. And another cool thing I'm gonna be showing you is how to actually save this image out as a height map so that you can take it over to other programs like Cinema 4D or Blender and apply it onto any piece of 3D geometry. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in Substance Designer, let's click on File, New Substance. Make sure you select Physically Base, Metallic Roughness. Under Graph Name, I'm going to call this Hex, and I want this to be at 4K resolution. And then we can click on OK, and this is going to generate a bunch of different outputs for us. And I'm just scrolling on my mouse wheel uh, to zoom in and out of here. You can see we've got Base Color, Normal, Roughness, Metallic, and Height. So the Height is the main map that we're going to be focusing on. You can export out a normal map as well that can be optional or a base color if you want to export out some color to apply onto your hex pattern okay so to create the shape for our hex pattern is very simple in the graph editor over here if i press spacebar it's going to bring up this quick search menu so if i type in polygon you'll see there's an option over here for polygon one so just left click to select that and it's automatically going to create that node so in the 2d view over here if i just drag out a little bit and press spacebar because by default this is what you're going to be seeing Right, spacebar allows you to see how a pattern tiles seamlessly. So I'll just press spacebar again. You can see that it's created our hex pattern and it was really that simple. But now we need to go ahead and actually make this tile. So let's go into the graph editor again, press spacebar and let's type in tile. And you'll see that there's a node over here called tile sampler. So just click on that and it's going to create a tile sampler for you. And this is a very powerful node in Substance Designer. You'll see when I hover over this node, we have an option for pattern input one. So we want to drag the output from the polygon to the pattern input one on the tile sampler. Then let's select our tile sampler and drag the output over here to the height and to the base color. So as soon as I connect, connect that to the base color, I can see my pattern being tiled on this 3D geometry. And if you click on scene, you can also choose other pieces of 3D geometry so you can see exactly how it's tiling. Okay, you'll notice one thing is that the tile pattern over here is a bunch of squares and not the polygon. So to change that, select the tile sampler, then on the right hand side over here under the properties, scroll down until you find pattern, and then change this from square to pattern input. And that's going to change it to our polygon shape. So right now we have a very uniform looking hex pattern, and we obviously want to make this look a lot more interesting. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, on the right hand side over here, while I have the tile sampler selected, I'm going to change my X amount to 6 and my Y amount to 6 as well. And I'm going to scroll down until I find scale. Oh, sorry, not scale. I'm going to scroll down until I find offset, which is under position. And I'm going to put this value on 0 0.5 and press enter. And that's going to create this really nice offset over here for our pattern. But if I actually go ahead and start scaling this up right now, you'll notice that the space in between this region and this region is not even. And that's because we have to put some very specific values in here for this pattern to actually look correct. So under scale, I'm gonna type in 1.19, press enter. And then here by the size, by X, I'm gonna type 0.84, press enter. And by Y, I'm gonna type 0.99. And there we go, so we've created some even spacing. We've got this nice offset honeycomb pattern. And if I press spacebar right now, you can see how that's tiling. It's tiling perfectly, and it's tiling seamlessly. Okay, so at this point, we are basically done. We've created our hex pattern, but I want this to look a little bit more interesting. So in the 2D view, I'm actually going to press spacebar just so I can see a single grid. Okay, so let's make this pattern look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to select my polygon, and here in the graph editor, I'm actually going to press spacebar, and I'm going to create another node called bevel. All right, now let's connect the polygon's output to the input of the bevel, and on the tile sampler from pattern input one, on to connect that into the height of the bevel. So bevel does exactly what it says, like what you would expect in a 3D program. It's gonna go ahead and actually bevel the edges. So if I select bevel over here, under the instance parameters, we have this distance slider. If I start, start bringing this down, you can see that it starts adding a bevel to these edges over here, okay? But now if we wanna actually visualize this a lot better, Right, if you want to start visualizing this a lot better, let's actually make the height visible on our 3D piece of geometry. So go to Materials, Default, go to Definitions, Physically, Metallic Roughness, change this from Parallax Occlusion to Tessellation. Then on the right-hand side, you'll see we've got Height, and just increase the scale over here. 
and you can see immediately that it starts pushing out this geometry in the form of this displacement or height that's been applied. You'll notice that these edges over here look really jagged and I'll show you how to troubleshoot that so that you get nice clean uh, looking displacement. But anyway, now we can actually see how the displacement looks on our 3D object, uh, which is really cool. So there we go. So we can still have a lot more fun with the way this hex pattern looks. I'm going to create one more node over here. So if I press spacebar and create a gradient map, while the gradient map is still selected, make sure you click on grayscale so this works correctly. Now let's go ahead and uh, basically drag the input from the gradient map into the height of the bevel and then the output over here into the pattern input one. So now if I select the gradient map and I click on gradient editor, What's really awesome about this, if I left click over here, it's going to create a color picker. So you can see I can move this around. This is a great way to control how the bevel looks as well. But what's cool about this is if I left click again to create another color picker, and let's say I want to make this white, you can see what type of shape I start getting on my honeycomb pattern. So right now it looks really crazy over here with all of these jagged edges, but like I said, I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, but this is a nice way to create uh, additional detail on your honeycomb pattern. So instead of it just looking like a very basic, you know, flat honeycomb pattern, which is fine, you can push it a lot further and add some more detail into this. And this is just reliant on this gradient editor, which is super powerful. And if you want to delete some of these nodes, obviously just select them and press delete. Okay, but I'm going to undo that because I was actually liking how this looks. So this is a nice way to add some additional detail. And once you're done, just close that and there you go. So very, very simple setup and now you've got a tileable hex pattern. But let me show you how to fix these really ugly looking jagged edges. All right, so to actually fix these jagged edges, it's actually an error in the program itself. Well, not really an error, but it's because this geometry doesn't have enough uh, subdivisions applied to it or tessellation. They call it the tessellation factor. So if I go to materials, default definitions and let's go back to tessellation you'll see that there's a, tessell a tessellation factor slider so by default they put it really low but if you bump this up it's basically applying uh, more subdivisions to these edges but a good general rule of thumb to make sure that you don't see any jagged edges even when you take it out of the program is to use another node and the node we're going to be using over here is called a blur a blur hq grayscale so connect the gradient map over here and then the output to the pattern input. So this blur HQ grayscale does exactly what it says. It, cre it creates a little bit of a blur. And by applying a little bit of a blur to our shape, right, it basically makes the shape not as hard uh, as it originally used to be. And that's going to counter uh, those really ugly looking jagged lines. So I always use a little bit of a blur HQ grayscale on my patterns just to make sure I don't have any really ugly looking jagged lines in other in another 3D program whenever I'm using displacement. So good general rule of thumb is to always use a little bit of a blur HQ grayscale. Okay, so now you can see we've got our tileable hex pattern. It looks fantastic right now in Substance Designer. And remember, if you feel like this gap is too big, you can always go back to the tile sampler over here because we did input those very specific values under size, especially the X and Y. But now you can go ahead and increase the scale over here a little bit. Maybe if, you, maybe if you don't want the space to be that big. Okay, so maybe you want it to look like that. And that looks that looks really cool. And you can see how we added that additional detail, which is controlled by this gradient map. Okay, so our hex pattern is done. You could see just how easy this is to do. But just one more tip. If you select the tile sampler, and if you scroll down over here until you find uh, this option over here under color, you'll see there's something called color random. If I increase the color random slider, You'll see that it adds a darkness a value to random pieces of the hex pattern. But if we actually look at the displacement over here, you can see any darker pieces are not extruding out as much as the pieces that are a lot lighter. So this is a nice way to create some really, really cool uh, variation. And just for the sake of this, because there's a universal glossiness on our material, let's drag the tile sampler into the roughness, just so we can see how this looks. All right, so you can see these darker regions over here with the roughness have got this uh, glossiness applied to them, but the other, reg the other regions seem to be a lot matte uh, with its appearance. So that's really cool. But I thought this color random slider was just a really cool um, feature to show off. 
but I'm obviously going to bring that back to zero because that's not what I'm going for for the final result. Okay, and another tip, if you if you want to add some color onto the hex pattern directly in Substance Designer, all you have to do is the following. You want to press spacebar and create a blend node, so you can see over here. So blend allows you to blend two nodes together. I'm going to press spacebar again and create a gradient map. Now let's uh, connect the tile sampler to the opacity and the gradient map to the foreground and then connect this to the base color. So now select the gradient map, click on gradient editor, left click over here just so I can see the color pickers. And I can see it created an extra one. I'm just going to delete that. Let's select the first color picker. Now you can make this red, right? whatever color you want it to be. And there you go. That's if you just wanted to add some color directly in Substance Designer or you can do that in another program like Cinema 4D, but I thought I'll just show you quickly how to add some color. So I won't be adding any color onto the final map because I'm not going to be exporting out base color. So I'm actually going to delete that. The only reason I, I put this onto base color is so I could visualize what's actually happening over here. Okay, so let's get this bad boy out of the program. So in order to do that, something really important you want to take note of is You'll see under the tile sampler, we can see this is at 4K resolution and it does say L16, which is a 16 bit depth. So the higher the bit depth, the better quality you're going to get with your displacement. But a general rule of thumb that I always do is I'll select my tile sampler, then you're on the right under output format. I'll click on this icon, select absolute, and make sure that this is on 16 bits per channel. So now I know for a fact that this is 16 bit depth and now I'm ready to go. And I'll always do that on the last node in my graph because this is the one that's driving uh, the the final output but sometimes you'll have to go back to individual nodes and make sure they are also on 8-bit but usually if you just change the last node to 16-bit you should be good to go so now to get this out of the program you'll see that there's a wrench icon on over here click on that and you can click on export outputs so I'm going to click on export outputs it's gonna bring up this menu so we're just working with the height but again, you can even save this out as a normal map, which is really cool. But I'll show you just with the height. Here we go. I, whenever I'm exporting height, I want to make sure that this is saving it out as a dot .tiff because it gives me really good quality. If I'm saving out a normal map, I'll usually save that out as dot .png because it doesn't have any loss in quality. So a height, a dot .tiff, 16-bit depth. We are good to go. We can click on export. It's going to go ahead and export that out to my desktop and I can bring that into any 3D program like Cinema 4D, Blender, it's completely up to you. All right, and quickly, just to show you how I'm setting this up in Cinema 4D, if I create a cylinder over here, press C to make it editable. All right, and then I want to select the top faces, so I'll double click to select all of these top faces, press delete, double click over here and delete that as well. And I'm gonna to go to create, shader, Cinema 4D Octane, so I'm using Octane Render. Just drag and drop that onto my cylinder. Let me send this over to the live viewer. I'll double click over here, change this to glossy, go to displacement, add displacement, go into the displacement. I'll leave that at 10 centimeters. I want to make sure this is on 4K and I want to change this to follow vertex normal. I want to create an image texture, go into the image texture and let's load in our hex. Over here, I'll just click on no. And I'm actually going to change the color over here to something a little bit darker. So let me go back to displacement. And there we go, we've got our tileable hex pattern. You'll see if I go ahead and select that, all right, go to UV transform. You can see it's doing a uniform scale. If I scale this down, it's tiling. So the only time where tiling will be broken up is if the actual geometry has a seam visible in that region. So this cylinder, I know the default cylinder actually has a seam on one of the edges over here. And that's why we're seeing that break up over there. But wherever there's no seams, the pattern is obviously going to be tileable because that's how we created it. Now you can go ahead over here, maybe do uh, untick uniform scale so that you get the perfect shape for your he your hex pattern. And let's just zoom in. You can see it looks really cool. Now we have this additional detail that we created in Substance Designer using the gradient map. And sometimes if you want to get some smoother geometry on here as well, you can select this Fong. This is the Fong tag and changes from 40 to something like 180. All right, and if that's still not enough, you can obviously make uh, the cylinder a child of a subdivision surface just to smooth out the edges so that your displacement looks perfect. But there we go. So now you know exactly, let me 
make sure uniform scale is enabled. Now you know how to create these tileable hex patterns. So really cool. You can even save that out as a normal map if you're not working with displacement. And you can apply this onto any piece of 3D geometry. All right, so that's it. Remember, if you're using Cinema 4D, you can even go ahead and animate the displacement just by clicking on this icon. So on frame zero, you can maybe have the displacement on zero. And then on frame 20, it goes to 16, All right? Which is cool. So you can animate the displacement as well. Just make sure I actually click on height so that it creates that frame. So you can create this displacement that actually animates just like that. Quick and easy. And with this, um, this scene over here, I just added a little bit of roughness. Okay, I added a little bit of index. I've got some area lights in the scene as well on either side, just to set that up just for presentation purposes. But there we go. Now you know how to do this. And I hope this has been useful because now you know how to make these tileable Higgs patterns. Right, so stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials on this channel. I truly appreciate the support so much. And goodbye.